So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, depending on from which place have you joined this webinar. Uh, welcome to this webinar. Uh, if you are looking for APIs and your financial force, uh, benefits of an API integration, you are at the right place. Uh, so what we are going to discuss in this webinar is about the different APIs that you can integrate with financial force, different systems you can integrate with financial force. Uh, what are the benefits uh, that you can get uh, after doing those integrations? And what are the steps that you should uh, take to do those integrations? And what are some things you should actually avoid while doing these integrations? So I again welcome you all. So I think let's get started and let's move to the first slide. So I think most of you can relate to this landscape. Uh, uh, and I think your organization may have a similar landscape. So as you can see, you have financial force that is already running in your organization. And when there is an organization, there is not just one system. There are different systems uh, that are running in and around financial force or whatever system that we have implemented. So we have taken a few examples. So it may be that you have financial force, you are using a e-signature tool, something called DocuSign, or it can be any other e-signature tool that you might be using. You may be using some e-commerce tool uh, like Magento, or you may be using, we are sitting in a pandemic world, so communication is all remote nowadays. So. As you all know, we have Zoom, we have Microsoft Teams that have become very popular. So you might be using a communication tool like Zoom for it. Uh, obviously, you might be using a CRM, which can be Salesforce, which can be the CRM that you might be using. Uh, you might be using some kind of project management tools to manage your projects or a defect management tool, something like Zira. Uh, you may be using a service management uh, or maybe field service tool for uh, maintaining your service levels, maybe like service max. And then there may be some internal legacy systems uh, that are already present in your uh, organization and they are not integrated right now, but you plan to integrate them. So it can be a, an old accounting system that may be using like QuickBooks or it may be uh, any other tool. So now, as you can see in this landscape, uh, every system that we have mentioned in this, right, it's an, it's a separate entity. Okay. So there are disparate and silo systems, which are lying all across your landscape and every system has a different purpose, uh, and a different ID to log in. Now, as many systems, as many source of data, and as many uh, systems to maintain. Uh, and I think in this world where we want to understand our customers better, it's obvious that we should have one single source of truth. right? And that can only happen if you have one database where everything is stored and where we can actually understand our customers better. And if we have so many systems with so many databases lying around, I think we will have multiple sources of information about our users or our customers. And then the whole story of uh, understanding our customers uh, becomes a very remote thing to uh, achieve. So it's important that we have, even if we have silo systems, we integrate them uh, into one system so that the information between these two, between these different systems uh, flow from one point to another so that all the information that is there is stored in a central storage database and the information matches with each other. Then only we can actually understand uh, that our data is correct. And if our data is correct, then only we will be able to understand our customers better and we can increase our productivity. So that is that is the whole point of 
integrating and to integrate obviously you need some kind of connectors and if you talk about connectors the best way to connect any two systems is to, through an api uh, which which actually acts as your connectors uh, to flow data between those two systems now to understand this better in a very uh, simple language let's move to the next slide where we will understand why api integration is so important and why we need to actually integrate all these systems into one so that uh, we have a unified view of the customer so let's take a very real life example uh, let's take an example of a bank and i think every uh, person uses uh, the banks in some or the other way and if you see uh, in a bank you have retail banking which is mainly into bank accounts you might be having a current account in a bank or a savings account you might be running a mortgage with a bank uh, you might be having a credit card from a bank and then maybe health insurance or some kind of loans that you might have been associated with now imagine a scenario and all these all these uh, systems that we are talking about they are different systems of a bank okay so bank account is a different system mortgages are on a different system credit card is a different division altogether insurance is a different division loan is a different division now imagine uh, having uh, all these uh, uh, different branches in a bank or different verticals in a bank and every vertical having a different system so banking account is a different system is handled on a different system mortgages is obviously on a different system credit card is on a different credit card system so imagine uh, john who actually has a bank account with the bank is also running a mortgage with that bank and he's a credit card customer now since the systems are not connected to each other and each system is not talking to each other so the customer executive right he might not know when he is calling you that you are actually running a bank account with him and you are actually a credit card customer so he might be calling you to have a credit card with the bank or become a credit card customer and it's so embarrassing for you to understand that you have been such a loyal customer with the bank and you hold both the credit card with the bank as well as the bank account right and why are they trying to sell a credit card again to you right so it's it's in that situation where you lose trust with the bank okay because you understand that the bank does not know you well so bank does not understand its customer well and it's not a problem of the bank it's basically the problem of their systems because the customer executive does not know that you hold a credit card uh as well with the bank so if the systems would have been talking to each other and they are not silo system but one system you would the banking executive would have logged into the system and he would have realized that john is not only a banking account customer with us but he is actually a credit card customer with us and with that knowledge why wow, the sale pitch is very different then uh, instead of giving you a credit card he would try to upsell you Uh, he would not cross sell he would try to upsell you that please increase the credit limit of your credit card because of your last few transactions or your because of your last few transaction history now that uh, same thing applies to uh, you, your organization as well if your systems which we actually uh, discussed in the last slide are silo systems so you don't know like uh, where your customers are residing so let's take an example you have got sales force you have got financial force right and the data is not flowing between these two systems so basically your finance team and the sales team are not connected to each other okay so the sales team will not realize whether the invoices for the customer the lead that has been closed has been sent to the customer or has he paid that or not right because there are two different systems that are not talking to each other and it has to be a manual process if you need to understand that 
Now imagine a situation where both Salesforce and financial force are connected to each other. So a sales guy can easily see how his customer is performing, whether he's actually paying his invoices on time, or is it something that he needs to get in and talk to the customer? So these kind of uh, scenarios happen within your system, like they happen with the bank. Because bank is again an organization which has discrete systems or silo systems. And if those silo systems are not talking to each other, right, they cannot service their customer in the same fashion as they should be. Right. So I think th that gives the answer of why we should integrate, right? Why uh, APIs are important and why we need to integrate all these silo systems that we have. Now, number one, as we discussed, it, it is because we need a single source of truth uh, so that we are able to understand our customers better, right? So we should have a single data source. And that is only possible if all the discrete systems or all these silo systems within the organizations are connected to each other, right? And if they're connected to each other, obviously, uh, users or your customers would have just one login ID through which they will be able to log in once and use any of these systems. So they don't have to remember uh, numerous user IDs or passwords. So as an example, your sales team, your finance team, right, or your marketing team, they can actually switch between systems depending on their roles and accesses. And that would obviously give a better user experience for them. And once uh, the systems are connected, obviously uh, it will enhance productivity because it's automated and they don't have to log in into different systems to cross check data between two systems. So sales guy can exactly know what is happening in the finance team if they want to know what is happening in the marketing team if they want to know that. And that would make the processes very easy, right? And once you have got data, which is correct, uh, which is in one place, you can use uh, Salesforce Einstein or any other analytics tool that you want to run on your data and know like how engaged your users are with the system or how engaged your customers are with the system. And I think, that is very essential to give them a personalized experience because every customer that is uh, logging into the system, he is a valuable customer and he needs personal attention to uh, uh, from our side on what we are doing. And to provide that extra customer servicing, you have to be on top. And to be on the top, you need a system which is robust, which can tell you what your customers want and uh, increase the productivity. Now let's take some examples of uh, some basic things that can actually help uh, you be more productive and uh, 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 increase your productivity. So let's take uh, financial force and Zira integration. Now, uh, typically, as you know, professional services automation uh, module in financial force brings your finance team, the service team, and the sales team in uh, one unified system, right? Because it helps you in managing your project. So a sales team might have closed the lead. Uh, then that project can automatically get created in financial force. And you can manage the resources here, make project plans there. Now imagine that uh, you are also using a Zira or defect management tool along with PSA, right? Now those two uh, systems, uh, if they are discrete, right, uh, the bugs or the project assignments and resources uh, that you are creating in your PSA application will not get passed to the Zira application and you will have to do that manually. But if you have got those two systems integrated, right? So your projects, assignment, and resources can easily flow through Zira, right? And they can create a Zira ticket or a Zira project there, okay? Where your team can actually, or your resources working on those tickets can fill in the hours 
uh, fulfill required information. And that time again uh, gets passed on to your PSA application so that the time logging is accurate and you can re uh, raise accurate invoices uh, or accurate timesheets from your system. Now, if that is not there, what will happen is there might be, uh, there will be a manual sync between those two systems. And whenever there is a manual sync, there are chances of errors. Okay. So it's whenever these two systems are connected, uh, it will actually help you in understanding your project health. It will take you less time uh, to send the invoices because at the month end, you will get all the time log that is in Zira passed on to your PSA application and you can actually build your resources based on the times they have logged. You can cross check them uh, with a single click of button. Uh, you will have a full synchronization between Financial Post PSA and Zira with no manual entry, right? And that is very, very important. What uh, integration does is it reduces your manual overhead. And when it reduces your manual overhead, it is not re only reducing your effort and time. It is actually helping you uh, manage the data correctly. Because whenever you have to have a manual sync or uh, so if there is, even if there is a manual sync, right, and it's not triggered properly or the data is not passed on properly, then there are chances of errors and the time will not be correct and you will raise wrong invoices to the customers, which will actually uh, have a bad impression on them and they will complain back to you. So which is not effective customer servicing, neither effective productivity. Okay. Similarly, we can uh, take an example of financial force and DocuSign integration. Here in this uh, world where we are sitting in different parts of the world and managing things uh, uh, on our own, it's important to sign the documents, right? Initially, we were going to the offices and we were signing them physically, but with this pandemic and remote working, it's very essential that we have a system where we can digitally sign documents because all the contracts, all the invoices, everything that has to be signed has to be signed electronically, right? So Financial Force provides a ready-made API, which actually integrates with DocuSign, okay? So you can send uh, your contracts uh, through DocuSign to the recipient, and uh, they can countersign that back and send it to you within minutes, right? So you can have your contracts back and then on the same day, right? Then you can send the data directly from Financial Force to any other system. You can actually uh, track where your document is lying in the pipeline process, whether it has been signed by the party. And you can send a reminder to them. Uh, you get rid of the tedious work and data entry that has to be done. Right. So it's it's important and it's important to and it's a simple integration, right? You don't uh, have to worry about much because there is an API that Financial Force provides it that uh, directly integrates with DocuSign. And once you have done that, obviously you have digitalized yourself, you have reduced the risk of uh, delays uh, from the customer side or from the signing purposes. And uh, we have seen uh, with our customers that has helped them a lot. And there's simple integration that happens. Similarly, uh, obviously, with this communication uh, method that we are having right now, we are not going physically to people. We are not connecting them face to face. So all this communication is either happening through web meetings or through Zoom calls, right? And uh, what better way to uh, enhance your system rather than having integrated it with a communication tool as well, right? Because uh, imagine uh, you are you have to fix a meeting for a project and you have to log off from PSA and then uh, go to Zoom and uh, schedule a meeting. It looks tedious, right? If your Zoom is connected with Financial Force, you can schedule your meetings without logging out of Financial Force. You can just uh, use uh, 
uh, Zoom link, which is there available, uh, made available in Financial Post PSA, and schedule the meetings there and there, right? And uh, it, it, it will actually help you in saving time, a lot of hassle, plus all your meeting recordings uh, can be made available. And it will actually help you in your uh, journey towards digital transformation where everything is in one place. You don't have to go to uh, Zoom meetings to plan a meeting, then send the link back to the customer or whomsoever you want to meet. So it would be a more collaborative effort uh, where uh, Financial Force provides a PSA Zoom connector, uh, which many people don't know about, uh, but they provide a Financial Force uh, PSA Zoom connector, which actually helps you in integrating with Zoom, and you can arrange your Zoom calls within PSA itself, right? So for any meetings or anything, just uh, click that link and it will actually help you schedule that meeting from the system itself. So we talked about communication, we talked about signatures, uh, we talked about uh, integrating financial force with your project management system like Zira. So all these are very practical examples uh, and they're easy connections that you can do because uh, ready-made APIs are available to connect, right? And uh, once you have done that, it makes your life very easy because you can communicate well, uh, you can sign your documents online, and then there are many more APIs, right? These are few that we have talked about. There are many which you can integrate, right? You can integrate financial force with your uh, association management system. If you are using some, uh, you can integrate with your shipping management system or logistic systems. So there's a complete list of APIs that financial force provides to uh, integrate uh, your silo systems into one. These are some of the basic examples uh, though they sound uh, basic, but it helps you a lot in increasing your productivity and having one source of data which you can rely upon. So uh, I think before we integrate any API, it's important to ask certain questions, right? Whether that API integration is feasible or not, right? And these are a few of the questions you should ask if you are planning to integrate an API with uh, your third-party system. Now, before I move to this slide, I just want to uh, launch a poll where I want to understand like how many of you are actually looking for integrating financial force with other systems. So that poll might be on your screen where it asks, like, are you looking to integrate financial force with other systems? Okay. Just let's give it 10 more seconds. Yeah, I think most of them have answered. Okay. That's good. So 80% of you are planning to integrate uh, financial force with other systems. That's good to know. So I think if you are planning to do that, it's important uh, to understand whether you should integrate or not, okay? So I think the first question you should ask is, are you wasting a chunk of your time in syncing data between financial force and apps, right? So you should understand why are you integrating? Are you running manual processes, which is consuming a lot of time? Uh, are you writing some scripts that you have to write every time you have to sync? Are there any kind of errors that you are reporting every time and then you are fixing them? So I think that is a basic question you should ask on why you should integrate, right? So time is one of the factors uh, that uh, takes time. So you should know like what time are you spending in second. If you are spending a lot of time and wasting a lot of time, obviously integration is the answer for you, okay? So once you've answered that question, I think the second question you should ask is, okay, I want to integrate. Now, suppose you want to integrate with maybe Zira or maybe DocuSign. So the second question you should ask is, I'm using Financial Force. Now, does Financial Force provides an API to connect with the app that I'm connecting, right? If not, I think then you have to rethink, okay? Because if the Financial Force is not providing you an API that is connecting with the app that you are trying to integrate, 
right? You need to think twice because then that integration would be difficult, right? Because uh, there are not ready-made APIs that we can use. Uh, and then we will have to build our own custom APIs, which would be more time consuming. Okay, so our recommendation is that uh, if there is an API available, I think then you should move to the third question on whether your uh, team has that skill set to perform that integration because APIs are available, but for that integration of that API with Financial Force, you need technical skills uh, who have actually done that job before. There is no point in trying a team which has not done that job before because then they will not understand what intricacies are involved in that integration. Okay. And uh, they would not be equipped with the technical skills. So when if, if you think your team has that skills, go with it. But if you think your team does not have the technical skills, I would we would recommend that you search for someone who has got that technical skill. Now that could be a third party consultant or maybe one of your reference who has done that. But always try to understand from them on what integrations they have done before. Maybe try to take a demo as well of what framework that do, do they apply for that integration so that you are confident that their team has done that integration before because they will have that framework uh, of doing it and it would be smoother. Once you have answered that, maybe another thing which is nice to have is uh, are you seeking analytics beyond the scape of Salesforce or your financial force, right? Because sometimes uh, integration uh, is about getting data into one data source so that you can run analytics on it. You can actually try to understand your customers better. So is it that you want to integrate because you want to have a better customer experience or you want to understand your customers better? Okay, so that is, if the answer is yes, you should go for that integration. And I think last, but a very, very important question that you should answer is, uh, are you going to use the same technology for the next three or five years? Because if you think you are not going to use financial force for the next three to five years, right? You should not think of integration because that is not a worthwhile investment to do. Uh, see, integrations are easy, but they involve a lot of, thinking in how we want to integrate, get the documentation done, get these scripts written to integrate and then test it out and then make users adapt to the new system. So it's a whole process that takes time and effort. So if you think that your system that you're using, you are not confident of that and you don't want to invest in it for the next three or two, five years, you should not go for integration. So there are many more questions, but I think if you are able to tick all these check boxes with these questions, uh, you will get an answer on whether you want to integrate or whether you should just hold on that integration. So whenever you are integrating, there are three things to remember. There are three scenarios which will happen. So because you are integrating between two systems, okay. Uh, so Suppose the first scenario is that you are, yeah, you have financial force uh, and you are trying to integrate that with maybe Zira. Okay. So the financial force is something that is, uh, you are already using, but Zira is something new that you have implemented. Okay. So then it would be a one way sync because all your data will reside just in financial force and that data will move into Zira. Uh, since Zira is new, you don't have to get that data back from uh, financial from Zira back to financial force. So it's a one-way communication. Okay. Second scenario is that uh, you might be using a uh, you might be using Zira, but you have just implemented financial force. Okay. So that means that your data is in Zira, but it's not there in financial force. Okay. So again, it would be a one-way thing where the data types will flow from zero to financial force. Since financial force is new, it does not have any data. So it would be just one-way thing. Now, the second scenario is that you both 
have financial force and Zira implemented. Okay, but uh, they are silo systems. They are not connected to each other. And now you realize that we need to integrate it because we want to have a better connectivity and we want to increase productivity. So then the data flow will be bi-directional where data will flow from financial force to Zira and then back from Zira to financial force. So it would be a bi-directional scene. So just make sure that uh, either it's a unidirectional uni sync or a bidirectional sync. And that is something that you would ask the people who are actually integrating as well to understand that scenario. And these are the three scenarios that will happen. So once you have thought about integration, it's important to uh, avoid some pitfalls before you start integrating. So I think first and foremost is that you should always start an integration with a very clear scope. You should answer all the questions that I that we mentioned in the first slide, which is this one on whether you should integrate or not. If you think you have ticked all these boxes, right, then I think you should clearly start writing the project scope. So there might be different teams involved. So may, it might be that you are integrating your uh, service cloud, maybe with financial force or financial force with Salesforce. So there is a sales team involved. There is a financial team involved. There is a project management team involved. So get everyone on board and get a document created, define the scope, make get a buy-in from them, and then only start the project once you're clear on what needs to be done and you've got a buy-in from all these stakeholders. This is first first step. You should be very clear on why you need to integrate. Maybe you can do a cost benefit benefit analysis, get the costs approved, and then start it. Okay. I think second thing that you need to understand is when you are integrating two systems, you have data in either of these two systems or in both these systems. Okay. And whenever we talk about data, uh, there is bad data and there is good data. And what I mean by bad data is there might be missing records in your systems. There might be duplicate records in your systems. There might be inconsistent records in your systems. So imagine you are integrating your financial force with maybe Salesforce. Okay. And your financial force has maybe uh, 100,000 records. And out of those 100,000 records, there are 20,000 records which are missing date of birth for your users, okay? Or uh, duplicate date. So once you propagate, right? Or once you sync the data, all those 20,000 records from your sales force will move to financial force. Now, what will happen is you already have 20,000 records that bad 20,000 records have got uh, transferred to your financial force as well. So instead of 20,000 bad records, now you have 40,000 records. So you have doubled your problem. So before doing any kind of sync, make sure that you re remove all these anomalies from your system. Get rid of all the missing records. Get rid of all these duplicate records. Clean the data before you move it into the new system. Otherwise, you are going to increase your problems multifold. Okay, it's very, very important, which most of... Uh, organizations don't do and then fall into a trap. So it's very important, or if you are getting the work done from a third party consultant, make sure that you follow this step or ask that question from them on how they are going to manage the propagation of bad data uh, from one system to another. Then obviously, if there are any custom configurations that have been done in either of these systems, you have to identify that and make sure uh, that they are propagated properly into the newer system. Because whenever you are doing a sync with the APIs, sometimes these custom configurations don't work, right? So it's important to identify those custom code or custom configurations that you've done in the system. Spend some time in it, identify it, and see what can be done of it, okay? Uh, obviously, field mapping is very important. Uh, uh, one thing in one thing in financial force may be something in another in Salesforce, right? Or maybe date of birth might be in a different format, right? So try to do a different uh, uh, 
proper field mapping between the two systems before moving the data from one system to another. Okay, and obviously involve professional experts for doing any kind of integration. Very, very important because if you don't have got those experts, they would not tell you what needs to be done. Uh, they will not uh, help you clean the data. They will not help you understand custom configurations. Maybe the field mappings may be wrong, right? So always try to hire experts who have done that. And I think before that, what I would also recommend is whenever you are doing any kind of integration and when you are syncing data between two systems, it's obviously syncing of data between two systems. So it's important that you do that process in phases. Never do bulk integration, uh, bulk migration, because so suppose you have two systems and they have like maybe 1 million records that you want to transfer from one system to another. So always pick maybe 10,000 records first, do a migration, get that tested from the users or the business, whoever are the right people to uh, tell you that the data that you have migrated is correct or not, get a certification from them and then move the remaining uh, records back into migration, right? Never do that in bulk because if you're going to do it in bulk and the scripts are not working and you have not certified uh, that the data is correct, it would cause the problems when the systems have been migrated and then it would be a waste of effort. So always do take baby steps, okay? Uh, do baby steps, certify that data and then move to the next step. It may take a bit of time but I think it would be helpful, right? Rather than realizing at the end that everything that you have migrated has issues, okay? So try fixing the problems uh, then and there uh, as the things go rather than waiting till the end and then giving a big bang, okay? So I think these are some of the things that we should do. There are other things as well, uh, but I think these are the most important that you should try to avoid. And I think this brings us to the end of the presentation. Uh, uh, we at Ableprio uh, give these educational webinars. Uh, so if you have any questions uh, based on the presentation, you can type in the question and answer box and I can try to answer as many as possible. And if you think you don't have it right now, you can always write us at vcare at ableprio.com or maybe phone us at 240-259-3076. Or the presentation and the recording will be, will be sent across to everyone uh, who is registered for this webinar. So don't worry on that. But if you have any immediate questions or anything that you want to understand about API integrations, uh, we are here to help you out. And if not, at this point of time, you can always email us whenever you want to, and we can help you as much as possible in guiding you on what you should do and what you should not do with integrations and what kind of APIs are available for financial force and how they can help. So let me check if we have any questions. Uh, I think. There is one and dot. Uh, do you have, so we have one question from Diana. Do you have a further breakdown? What and how can we split integrating PSA and Zira besides time locks? Yes, so if uh, you have integrated Zira and PSA, everything, every information that is present in PSA can actually flow into Zira. Okay, so Zira is basically a defect management tool. So it's not just time locks. It can be ticket numbers. It can be your sprint plan, uh, your sprints that can actually uh, uh, get transferred from one system to another. So any data that is there in financial force or PSA, can be transferred to Zira and any other information from Zira can be tracked back to PSA, right? So it's a multitude of information. Uh, what we have given in this slide was just an example of the time logs. So hope that answers that question.
uh, what what is the URL for the Financial Force public APIs? Uh, so you can't get that URL. Uh, you have to ask your uh, API consultant uh, once they have done it, or maybe if you've got Financial Force implemented uh, uh, with you, you can ask them on the APIs that can be provided. They just give you a list of the APIs that are available but it's the financial force team that can actually help you provide that kind of APIs. Okay. Uh, we have another question which says, what if we have a resource API in financial force to connect any third party HCM? Do you have details about the connect app configuration, app configuration using OAuth2? Have you done such integration? So uh, OAuth2 is just a way of connecting uh, financial force with any other API. It's just an authentication method, right? And it can be different. The authentication methods can be different to integrate. So they can be SAML based, they can be OAuth2. So obviously, uh, there is, so any kind of resource APIs, if you need, right? You can ask the financial force to help you out with that or uh, you can search the documentation for them. So they can provide you the documentation, but it's not publicly available, right? You cannot get that available uh, on net. It is something that is very exclusive and can only be available to financial force customers. So worth giving them a call, or maybe asking your development partner if you have any to get that done. Okay, that's good if you're already on it. So that's good. And in case you need any other information, uh, let us know. We can help you out with it as far as we can. But generally for APIs, you have to have uh, API documentation, which you can get from the app that you are actually trying to integrate and you can get the uh, integration uh, help from the financial support. I think we don't have any more questions now. So uh, it's thanks for attending this webinar and uh, uh, we will mail you the presentation and the recording for this webinar. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to contact us on the below email ID and the phone number. Uh, we keep on giving these educational webinars to everyone so that uh, we can share our knowledge of based on our experience with our customers to you all so that it can help you out and we are ready to help. So a good night to everyone and thank you so much for attending the webinar. Thank you, bye-bye.